what it takes to build a world-class management team. And in the break, I mentioned that the recruiting landscape is so competitive these days, and you said you have to think different. Totally. It's great to be back, Emily. Nice to see you. I think uh, you have to think about it as you're very lucky to have a few key slots open. And I think about it like having two tickets to the 50-yard line at the Super Bowl, and which of my friends are going to be lucky enough to come with me. Interesting. So I, I've always found that I'm going to try to have somebody have the, the job of their life. And I go sell and recruit constantly to find people that want to be part of that job. Now, one of your points is that you should be looking for a great passion as opposed to a great resume. Why? Well, I think there's a lot of people with a great resume and in great companies that aren't necessarily always great or great for a startup. So have there been times so, where you turned down someone with a great resume because you felt they didn't have the passion? Absolutely. I, well, I also think it's not just passion, it's competency and capability. And that just because you're in a great company doesn't mean you necessarily were the person doing the building or driving the bus. You might have just been on a bus. And somebody that's in a 10,000 person good company may not be the same, per same person you need to build the very first iteration of a product in a startup. What's an example of, of someone or some company that does recruiting really well? I would just say uh, Mark Benioff is a, an amazingly good recruiter. He never stops. In he's what always, way? Well, he's always looking one to two people deep for every position he has. He's well connected in the industry. He's also a pretty good salesman. I've seen him at his Dreamforce presentations. He is, he is compelling. He's compelling. It's hard to say no. I would think it's hard to say no to a guy like Mark Benioff. I would say that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on his board. I, you know, right. I said yes when he asked. So. What if you're not as good of a salesman as he is? I think it's all about selling. To, well, it's not all about selling because these people have to come in and be delighted when they're there. Right. It's painting a picture of why this is the right place for you. And quite frankly, if somebody you're trying to woo into the job and you're selling too hard and they don't really want to come, you shouldn't waste a ton of energy on that. You need to paint them a picture of why it's special and they will either get excited and lean in or not. And I never get worried that there aren't more people that will lean in. I think of it as, that's why I said I think about it differently when we started right, this. Right. Because I think there's uh, very few really change the world cool jobs out there. And we ought to be truffle hunting for the best people in the world to go do those. You also say to recruit constantly. What if you don't have open jobs? What if you don't have the luxury of a budget? So hire when I say people. recruit constantly, that doesn't mean hire constantly. It just means always know who the next person is. So if somebody decides to leave you, you know where to go as opposed to waiting four months to start you know, your recruiting cycle and finding somebody. Because it's all about people and getting things done. I would also say at eBay, Meg was fabulous at this. She would often bring people in that were great executives or great talents when we didn't have openings. And really? then she'd give them special projects. And that created a little controversy. But well, and how do th those people feel about that? Because they don't necessarily know what they're going to be doing down the line. Well, we were growing so fast, and we had so many opportunities. We had a track record of putting those people into bigger jobs. So like Jeff Jordan came in to run a small thing. He was running the U.S. business within six months. We knew, he knew that he was going to do something big. We just didn't know exactly what. And so you kind of have to have people buy into the journey. What do you do when your budget is tight? And you want someone who might cost more than you can afford. Can you entice those people? First of all, I'm, I, I would always want people that wanted more stock than compensation. I try to pay them enough to make sure they don't, aren't homeless. <laughs> right. But I'd rather have them enjoy a lot more upside. Uh, so uh, I, I have never gone. I'd rather treat people well and make sure that they're going to make a ton of money if we do well. Now, you also say not to underestimate what you have to offer as the employer. Totally. All of us, you know, it, you know a lot of people get nervous in you know, my portfolio. Those companies will say, how do I recruit out of Google? Well, look, you have something Google doesn't have. You have the chance to build something from the beginning, from the start. It's magical. A lot of people would love to do that. So you have to, that's what I mean by thinking differently about it. You have to realize you have an enormous gift to give somebody, and then who is it that's going to be able to take that? Now, I've heard executives say everyone is replaceable. If you lose a good person, how big a deal is it? Do you it's, think about it that way? 
Oh, I, I first start with the best people I want to keep forever. And as long as they're willing to be with me. So, so I don't try to But think are they replaceable? If you lose them. Of course, every, at the end of the day, if they get hit by a bus or they die, you have to keep going on. You hate not having them there, mm -hmm. but you, the mission of the company and the passion and the dream has to keep living. So I, I, I was thinking about this question. Everybody has that investment that they passed on and they wish they didn't. Oh, when they looked at Facebook and they wish they'd invest or Pinterest or Twitter. Do you have a person that you wish that you'd hired that you, you passed on? Is there anyone that you've seen? And I know you probably can't name names, but. Right, uh, absolutely. And there, and there were times, and there are on the flip side, people that I didn't pass on that I wish I had. You know, right. so I've made hiring mistakes as well. Any uh, names? No. <laughs> um, so, you know, how do you apply these to your own? company and, and, and the, the companies where you sit on their boards. Right. Well, when we have to hire a director, we start with what are the talents we're looking for and let's go find the best in the world and we don't settle. And often when you're on... Because being on a board takes a lot of time. It's, it's takes a lot easy. of time, but it's also an honor uh, it, to, to be on boards. So, um, and, and often hard work, but we look for the best talent that we need and we don't settle until we find it. 